Opo, a female bottlenose dolphin, was first noticed swimming in the Hokianga Harbour in June 1955. She was thought to have been separated from her pod and began following boats as they entered the harbour. Opo enjoyed human company and appreciated being rubbed with oars as she swam alongside vessels. Her fame increased that summer. Opononi was a popular holiday destination, and visitors soon noticed Opo swimming close to shore and near the wharf. By letting herself be patted and ridden by small children, she became known as Opo the Friendly Dolphin. As she grew more confident, Opo's range of tricks broadened, and in film footage she can be seen juggling beach balls and even beer bottles. She had a favourite admirer in a local girl, Jill, who was regularly given rides around the bay. Opo was also highly respected by some Māori, who believed she embodied the spirit of Kupe, the legendary navigator who first discovered the Hokianga. Over the summer, Opo's celebrity grew and thousands of visitors transformed the normally sleepy community. Local businesses boomed, and the tea rooms, hotel and campground were flooded with extra visitors. This led to traffic chaos, and for the first time ever, Opanorni needed a traffic officer. Opo featured in newspapers, photographs, documentaries and songs such as Opo the Friendly Dolphin, which was recorded in a rush to take advantage of the wave of interest. An image of Opo in the embrace of a local school teacher fetched ten pounds, the highest price paid for a photograph by the New Zealand Herald at that time. However, the attention paid to Opo was not all good. Fears for her safety began to increase when it was rumoured one of her fins had been clipped by a bullet. Such concern led to the establishment of the Opanoni Gay Dolphin Protection Committee. On the foreshore, a sign with an explicit message was erected. Don't try to shoot a gay dolphin. With Opo's welfare in mind, an order in council under the Fisheries Act was made. It became an offence to take or molest any dolphin in Hokianga Harbour. These measures proved to be fruitless, and Opo was found dead in March 1956 on rocks at Kotu Point near Opononi. Some suggested that Opo became stranded, while others said that she had been intentionally killed by fishermen with explosives. Whatever happened, the timing of her death, the day before legal protection came into effect, was highly suspicious. Despair spread at the news of Opo's demise. However, even in death, she was an attraction. Her body was covered in sacking and hung from a tree for two days, while an expert from Auckland Museum travelled to the Hokianga to make a plaster cast of her corpse. She was farewelled at a funeral in Opanoni and buried outside the local hall. Wreaths were laid around the grave and the foreshore. The Governor-General sent a telegram to the children of Opanoni expressing his sympathy. In Whangarei, a girls' hockey team played with black armbands. Even today, visitors to Opanoni often ask about Opo. A statue of the dolphin by sculptor Russell Clark stands near her grave. After her death, Opo's legacy continued in children's books and she was the inspiration for Morris Shadbolt's 1969 novel, This Summer's Dolphin. In Opanoni, dolphins are still seen. Local operators take people out to swim with them. Northland is a popular place for this activity, thanks to the large number of bottlenose dolphins in the region. But none are quite as famous as Opo, who is still remembered with great affection.